In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about why we can't just include all of the x variables we have into a model. Pretty soon, we're going to start a discussion of model building and variable selection, helping us decide which variables should go in our model and which ones shouldn't. And this is just going to help motivate that discussion of why we need to choose which variables go in the model, rather than just put every variable we have into a model. To demonstrate, I'm going to first start with this data set called body fat percentage. And this, we're going to try and estimate the body fat percentage as a function of BMI, ABRIST, and some other variables. And for the sake of our discussion, let's just suppose that we wanted to interpret the effect that BMI has on body fat percentage. So first, I'm going to go ahead and read in this data. I'm going to call it BFP data. We can check the names of the data set. We can see here we have body fat percentage. That's our main outcome. And the x variables we have are categorized age, height, BMI, as well as abris circumference. This is another measure of body size, similar to BMI. We can see the first three rows of the data. And for now, let's ignore that zero percentage body fat. That's clearly some error. And later when we get to exploring this data set, we'll explore that data point and figure out what to do with it. Now let's go ahead and attach the data. Now this right here is a good reminder of why it's generally not recommended to attach data. We can see this message we're getting here that the following object is masked and it's the variable height. And the reason we're getting this message is because we've already attached the FEV data, which had a variable called height. And now we're also attaching this BFP data, which also has a variable called height. And so what the masking means is that the variable height from this BFP data is masking or sitting on top of the height variable from the FEV data set. So R might end up getting confused when you have two variables with the same name both attached as one overwrites the other and you might not be working with the exact data that you thought you were. So this is why it's better to work without attaching the data. As I mentioned, I attach the data because for teaching purposes it makes the code a bit simpler and easier to talk about and look at. If you are going to work with attaching the data, make sure you only attach one data set at a time and make sure you detach it when you're done working with it. So I'm just going to quickly confirm that this height variable is the height for the BFP data and not the FEV data. To do so, I'm going to check the length of the height variable. So this is telling me that it's 252 observations. And I'm also going to check the length of the BMI variable. Okay, we can see that it's 252 observations. And I'll also check the length of the FEV variable. And we can see this was 654 observations. So the height variable we have here is the height from the BFP data, not from the FEV data set. But we just want to make sure to be careful when working with attached data. I'm going to go ahead and fit a model that uses all of the X variables to predict the body fat percentage. And we'll see some weird things that pop up that we'll explore a little bit later in the course. So here I'm going to fit the model. And now I'm going to ask for a summary of the model. Okay, and in this summary, we can look at all the model coefficients, the intercept of 4.44, the coefficient for BMI of negative 0.322, the coefficient for abris circumference positive 0.773, and so on. Now, we're not going to go too deep into this right now, but let's take a look at that coefficient for BMI. What's the interpretation of that coefficient? When BMI increases by one unit, we'd expect body fat percentage to decrease by 0.322. Now that's clearly a bias estimate. Right? If your BMI goes up, your body fat should also be going up. Right? As BMI goes up, your body fat percentage does not go down. So what we're seeing here is bias due to collinearity. Okay? The fact that BMI and the abris circumference are so highly correlated. Let's quickly just take a look at the correlation between those two. If we look for the correlation between BMI and the abris circumference, right, we'd see they're very highly correlated. So the idea of collinearity is a topic we'll explore as the course progresses. But what I wanted to just mention now was some of the problems that can occur when we just throw all the variables we have into a model. We need to think carefully about which variables should go in and which variables should not. And model building and variable selection is a topic we'll start to discuss pretty soon in the course. Now, let's detach that data. And I'm going to work with a, another example to demonstrate why we should not include all x variables in a model. One more example, and this one's going to be a simulated one, working with some simulated data of showing the problems that can happen when we just include every variable we have. So what I'm going to do is just generate some random data that has no associations at all. The first thing I'm going to do is set a seed. This isn't necessary, 
But what this does is it, it gets R to reproduce the exact same random data each time you run this code. So we're going to go through this example now. And if in one year's time from now, I run the same code and I set the same seed, I'll get the exact same random sets of data for all of these variables. So the first thing I'm going to do is generate a Y variable. And to do so, I'm going to randomly select from a normal distribution n equals 100 observations and with a mean of 100, a standard deviation of 20. Or in other words, I'm going to take a normally distributed population with a mean of 100, a standard deviation of 20, and I'm going to randomly select 100 observations from that distribution. And I'm going to make that my y variable. Now I'm going to create an x1 variable. Again, I'm going to randomly select from a normal distribution, right, a normal that has a mean of 0, a standard deviation of 1. I'm going to randomly select 100 observations from that distribution or I'm going to randomly select 100 Z scores. You can think of it that way. Now I'm going to generate another variable, X2. Again, I'm going to go into a normal distribution that has a mean of 10, a standard deviation of 3, and I'm going to randomly select 100 observations from this distribution. Okay, I'm going to continue on selecting X3, X4, all the way up to X10. Now these are a bunch of randomly selected numbers. So how well should X1, X2, all the way up to X10 be able to predict the outcome Y? They shouldn't at all, right? There should be no association between a bunch of randomly selected numbers, which we're calling x1, x2, and so on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit a model. I'm going to call it random model that uses all of these x variables to try and estimate the y. Again, this model should be completely useless. These variables should have no association with y. Let's fit the model. And let's take a look at a summary of this model. We can see the summary of the model here. I've just expanded the screen a bit so we can see all the coefficients on one screen together. And what do we end up seeing? The first thing to note is that the x7 variable is actually a significant, statistically significant predictor of y. Now we know this shouldn't be. x7 has absolutely no association with y in reality. They're both just a, a bunch of random numbers. The variable x8 also is a statistically significant predictor of the outcome. Okay, so what we're seeing here is when we throw a bunch of random things in a model, some of them start to pop up as being statistically significant. Let's also take a look at the R squared for this model. We can see there the multiple R squared is 0.1911. Okay, interpreting that value, these variables x1 up to x10, they can explain 19.1% of variability in y. And again, we know that in reality, x1 up to x10 explains 0% of the variability in y. So part of why I wanted to work with a simulated example was in the case of a simulation, we know none of these variables are related to the outcome at all. And we can see what happens when we just start to throw a bunch of things in the model. Some of them pop up as being significant just by chance. 